Next, we're going to add some more sounds on top. Um, so we'll record arm, the drum track, and this would be where I'd kind of design some auxiliary sounds. Um, in separate sessions, I create folders with sounds that I like, kicks, snares, hats, glitches, clicks, all these kinds of things. Um, and then I'll build little kits based on whatever I'm feeling for the song and um, do that with battery. So we're going to skip over that step. So I already have a drum kit here. All we have to do is go to the clip. And if you recall, we're using this uh, MIDI envelope system to change drum clips. So MIDI controller uh, 9, the value of that determines what drum kit we pick. So I always base that on this number, which gets assigned to the song. Plastic is song number 15. Um, so we need to put this controller at value 15. And then whenever we play this clip, we're going to get the proper drum kit. So if I go to my drum pad controller, hit some pads, got a few sounds that I've pre-designed to work with this song. So I'm going to do a few rounds of overdubs with those. We'll do one to add some little ghost notes. And that's just hitting notes on alternating 16th notes. Quantize those. Oh, this one got away from us. I don't think I like that one. I think I want another one here. Um, I think I got a snare doubling sound here. Yeah, it's a good snare double. So we'll layer that on top of the snares. It's kind of like a clap. It's pretty traditional drum layering technique. And I'll do a little percussion thing add those sounds in there somewhere uh, we'll quantize all that and sometimes I'll do little synthetic things little rolls and whatnot awesome so now we got an augmented drum part and we can uh, move on. So folding up the drum track, unfolding the bass track. Let's see what we got going on here. We'll hear the drums and the bass together. Now we got a good drum part. Definitely want your drums and your bass to be working well together. So to improve the groove of this part, um, I noticed that the note ends are not on any particular notes, and putting those on important note values can add a lot to the groove of the song. So I'm just moving these all to quarter note values. Yeah, and those kind of lock in with the drums a little bit better. Um, so after we've done editing, um, now would be a good time to design a bass sound using FM8. Um, again, I'm going to skip over that. For the sake of time, um, the one thing we just got to do is for this clip, make sure it's got its program change message, program 15, and so that'll call up the appropriate sound whenever this clip is played. Um, one thing I do for all the sounds that I design is add a modulation controller. So I use MIDI controller number 28 um, for every sound that I make. Just got to record arm this track, reach over to the mojo, and I can modulate the bass sound like that. So I'm just going to overdub an envelope. OK, that's pretty cool. Might clean that up a little bit. You could try to make it super tight or leave it sounding a little organic, using the grid or not using the grid. Um, maybe we'll smooth this part out, edit this envelope a little bit, maybe bring it down so it's a little less intense here so that sounds pretty good we'll move on from the bass on record arm that and we could check out the effects track so I could add more sounds here I could go through some kind of ambience kind of things I could work with what we got already which is this organ line I love to mess with Ableton's uh, warp markers and envelopes. For this example, we can go into the clip envelopes and just do something quick with the volume. This is just a really simple trick to add rhythmic quality to something that's more sustained. And you can mess around with that. 
get all kinds of tricky on it. And yeah, you can go to town with those envelopes and warp markers, and you can do the same kind of editing we did with the guitars too. Um, but that's good enough for now. So we'll unsolo that, fold it up. And the one last thing I wanna do is add some vocal harmonies. So let's solo our vocal track, and we'll use the drums and the bass, add the just rhythmic and harmonic references, and we'll record arm this vocal harmony track. So now if I go into the vocal live track and turn up the harmonies, we can record harmonies as notes from our MIDI keyboard. And we can go through all kinds of ideas with that. This is just a simple kind of playing, uh, playing the chords of the song. You know, we might delete this note because it's a little bit static. Um, you know how that sounds with just the vocals. I know you've been drinking because we ain't had a fire. And we can edit the velocities. I'll often do that just to make them um, super consistent to start with. Usually put them at 100. And we can clean up the rhythmic values, editing or quantizing the ends of these notes. It's great so that they are, there are no gaps when I hit that harmony button. And that's looking pretty good. So we'll dearm that track, take off solo, and let's listen to the whole thing we got together. <laughs> So that's basically how we create all the parts for one section of a song. And you simply repeat that process to create the parts for the other sections, and then you can start playing around with the arrangement. For this song, Plastic, we've got roughly four different sections. I'll show you the bass part so you can see a little bit what's happening, but uh, here's the verse from the original version of this song. Pre-chorus. A chorus. and a bridge. So by combining those in different orders, we can try out a relatively endless number of arrangements for the song. Um, it's really neat to do that in kind of a live-ish, improvised kind of way. Um, the flexibility of having all these things controlled from just the right hand on the mojo lets me try out a lot of ideas really quickly. Um, and to give you an idea of you know how those um, sections build out into longer sections, an idea for an intro that I use a lot is just using all those parts and bringing them in one at a time. So I'll play the verse from this song and just add one part every four bars. <laughs> So that's how I would do an intro, you know, and I could do that with the verse, the chorus, try different sections, um, do a similar thing to, you know, reuse the same section and add more interest each time it comes around. So yeah, that's everything you need to know for developing these parts and creating arrangements. <laughs>